This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. On my site, you'll find my recipes, articles, videos, and more, all designed with Squarespace. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com babish. The link is in the video description. One of the questions that I get asked most often is, why are you in Mazatlan? Why did you move out of New York? And so I've decided I'm gonna answer the question. And the reason is pretty simple. I mean, look at this place. It is one of the most incredibly beautiful places that I've ever been. And it also has something that I really, really love, which is shrimp. Some of the most amazing shrimp I've ever had. It's what keeps me here along with the beach. This episode is all about my love letter to Mazatlan. Welcome to Mexico, Prevalo. If I see locals eating in a certain place, I, it's probably like 70% gonna be a good place to eat. And then I watch the person cooking, and if they look like they take pride in what they do, right? The people that want to be there, that want to present you the best food that they can possibly make. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in the way they do things. They put the food down and then they wait. They watch you as you take that first bite. It's this unspoken exchange. And when that happens, I usually know that that's a good place to eat. And that's what I felt about Ipapa. This place is not by the ocean and it's like a little hole in the wall, but this is my favorite aguachila in the city. And aguachila is similar to a ceviche. Super fresh, raw seafood is thinly sliced and quickly marinated in an acidic salsa using lemon or lime juice. But the big difference is that in ceviches, the fish can marinate for up to 15 minutes, but an aguachila is sauced and served immediately. It's the shrimp at Aipapa that push it over the top. They taste like they just came out of the ocean, served with salsas that are incredibly flavorful and super spicy, which balance out the creaminess of the avocado and the sweet brininess of the shrimp. It was being able to sit outside in the tropical breeze, eating an aguachila even during the darkest and loneliest days of quarantine. That was enough to keep me optimistic and really help me get through it. So my family is uh, Mexican-American. My grandparents are from Monterrey in Torreon. My grandfather loved Mexico. He loved the culture, he loved the food, and he would tell me stories about it when I was little. And it just started my love affair with Mexico. And then more recently in 2019, I decided I wanted to write a book. And so I wrote a proposal about a regional Mexican cookbook where I would go from region to region, trying the food and writing recipes of the things that I loved eating the most. I, I visited probably close to 160 cities in this country. And then I was traveling when the pandemic got really bad in New York and I had a choice. I could fly back to New York and I figured I would probably just get stuck there. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna have to be alone for, you know, at that time I thought like maybe three or four weeks, I wanna do it by the ocean. So I was like, all right. I looked at the map, I'm like, what is the nearest beach? And Mazatlan, I've heard great things. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna drive there. Then I'll just wait there until it passes. When I drove into Mazatlan, I got here like around five o'clock and the sun was setting and the city hadn't shut down yet. So it, there were still people and, and parties and the bars were open and there was an energy here. It was intoxicating to me. It was like I just took a drink of something really delicious but also really strong. And I remember feeling like this is exactly the kind of place I want to be. And right now, where I want to be is Mercado Pino Suarez, to buy the ingredients for an agua chile to make in my own home. A home that I would not have found had I not walked to this market almost every morning during quarantine. So after it was clear that the pandemic was going to last a long time, I decided that I was going to start cooking all the recipes for my book. And so if you draw a line from my Airbnb to the Mercado, you have to pass by this house. And there was a sign out front that said it was for sale. Finally, like, I was like, you know what? I want to look inside this house. I don't know if I'm really seriously thinking about buying it, but I would at least want to look at it. So I reached out to the owners and I made an appointment and we sat here, we sat like right here, talking for about an hour and a half. 
before I even looked at the house. And Socrates was like, I guess you came to look at the house, not talk to us. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I, I mean, not only did I fall in love with them, and I also loved this house. I don't know, like, they just put me at ease. And I think that's so true of so many people I've met here. I lived in New York for 20 years. You don't look at people in the face, and you're on guard all the time. Like, what do you want? Why are you talking to me? Like, what do you need? Like, what are you after? And all of a sudden, I get into this city, and I'm like, all oh, these people just want to be nice. They want to share their stuff with me. They want to share their experiences. One thing that I've learned living here in Mexico, even though it's only been for a short amount of time, is I just know that I need to be as good as they are. It's such a good way to live, and you know? And it's like, if you just live your life doing good for other people without expecting anything in return, it just makes the world a better place, you know? And in the spirit of giving and generosity, I want to share this incredible Mazatlekenawa chile with you. Okay, so for the agua chile, I'm making two salsas. The first is a salsa verde. So I'm gonna take some chile serranos, a nabanero, some cilantro, some lime juice, a little bit of lime zest, salt and pepper, and blend that up. And for the salsa negro, we're using chile de arbol, chile serrano, chile habanero, garlic, and soy sauce. <coughs> so for the agua chile, I'm using one pound of large shrimp, cleaned and deveined, tails removed and butterflied. Three quarter cup fresh lime juice, half of a medium cucumber, peeled seeds removed and thinly sliced, half a medium red onion, thinly sliced, half a medium avocado, peeled, seeded, and thinly sliced, and a little bit of fresh ground pepper. I hope you've fallen in love with Mazatlan as much as I have. And I also want you to try the aguachile. It's a super simple recipe. It's so incredibly delicious. If you love shrimp, you are going to love this and it's so easy to make. But more importantly, I want you to find your happiness and live in it. 11 years ago, I was working at an advertising agency. I felt like I was stalling in my career. I always loved to cook, but I thought that was just my hobby, that making money and getting ahead, those were the keys to success and my happiness. I was wrong. When I finally got the courage to quit my high salary job, go to culinary school, and make minimum wage as a line cook, that was when I found real happiness. Now, I wake up every morning excited to go to work in this stunning tropical paradise. Do what makes you happy, and the money and the success will follow. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They have been a great partner in bringing this show and others to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. With their SEO tools, you know that your site will appear in more search results and get found by more people. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.